We made it to Friday. Now we have a smorgasbord of books. Smorgasbord. Let's start with the oldest. Now this note, these are just random books, kind of good things every once in a while you kind of come back to. So, number one, the Nicomachean Ethics. So this is old school, you know, there are certain things that Socrates wrote, good, Plato's Republic, you kind of all read coming through school. He has some other good ones that are even shorter, the, the Theotetus and some other ones that are really nice. Um, but a nice kind of where we get our ethics, Aristotle is one that Aquinas and a lot of our scholastics build on someone who looks into the person and begins to pull out some of the pieces of who we are through natural law. And so he writes a lot of this in a short book called The Nicomachean Ethics. So if you haven't read it in a while, check it out. Different category, Dante. So Dante is the Divine Comedy. Uh, this is kind of a fun one to read. Uh, this is the first one, The Inferno. Uh, of course, then there's Purgatorio and then Paradiso. So hell, purgatory, paradise. And it really is, it's just an interesting read. More than anything else, it kind of puts um, kind of the, the medieval mind and puts into image some of the things that we believe. And then he says, well, what would that look like? And he puts it into a narrative form. And so you get to follow through um, with this character as he walks through with his guides through each of those three places. Uh, really fascinating read in many, many ways. I'm jumping back to a saint. This one is, a lot of people don't know that probably one of the best biographies of Joan of Arc was written by Mark Twain. Mark Twain actually says that this is his best book. He says it was some 12 years uh, uh, research in the making, months and months in archives in France. And then he finally wrote it uh, after trying to start a few times, but he says this is by far his best uh, one, and one that took the most work. So if you're looking for a little biography to read, read Twain's Joan of Arc. This is one that I ate up uh, kind of unexpectedly when the new documents came out. Um, this is called The Church of Spies. When the new documents were released by the Vatican from World War II era stuff, um, Mark Ribling kind of went in and put it all together and told a story. And so this one is about how Pope Pius XII kind of ran, as you see the subtitle here, The Pope's Secret War Against Hitler. And so a lot of really fascinating information that he brings out and tells a story of how the church um, was between a rock and a hard place, but how they were governing a lot of the underground um, workings against the Nazis in that time and in Europe and the connections to the U.S. Uh, so really interesting, interesting book to read there as well. Church of Spies. Some of these are different books. Gift suggestions, really, I need something random to read. Check out some of these. Now, here's a little different area as well. This one's called Adam and Eve After the Pill. This is by Mary Everstadt. And she gets a lot of really interesting um, research and puts it all together of how the sexual revolution um, kind of gives mixed messages and where it's led us to now, but a lot of the science behind it. Um, she's kind of a scientist. Her husband is a... Is a what do you call it, demographer. I heard some talks on them when we were in Poland for a semester as a seminarian, uh, and the, it's, a, it's a powerful duo. But they have a lot of really great information here. It's a short book. It uh, goes through and talks about it. Kind of similar in the vein of Janet Smith's Contraception, Why Not? A lot of the really fascinating data that came out of her research. And so Mary Eberstadt puts that in hers here as well. Finally, and that this is a nice suggestion for a young adult. If you haven't read this one, Letters to a Young Catholic by the old friend George Weigel. Uh, he does a really good job in this book of putting flesh on the bones of Catholicism. Like what does it look like in different, what do certain virtues and important truths look like in different places around the world? Uh, and even one of the places that he chooses, so he'll choose a different place um, around the world, and he'll talk about how that virtue is, and he'll tell stories about it and say how that virtue is manifest by that area. And one of these is actually uh, a church that you will recognize, one of the chapters in this book. So really suggest this if you got a late high school into college young adult is a good, uh, a good gift suggestion, Letters to a Young Catholic by George Weigel. So those are a couple random a uh, lot of different 
options there, but ones that are all good and very informative in different ways. So I hope this week has given you some different suggestions and different books that you can read through. I was going to do an extra day of children's books for family resources. But a lot of our um, the families that I re reached out to here at Mary Magdalene had such a wealth of information, there was no way to put it all into one um, day or really week. And I don't have really hands to be able to show them to you or talk about them. So we're going to see if we can put it together as a parish resource in, in a much more in-depth and bigger way. But thank you to all the families who did the research and, and gave me uh, lots of options for different kinds of children's media and suggestions. So those will be coming out on the, on the St. Mary Magdalene website at some point in the near future. All right. Well, hope you'll have a great weekend. Next week is week five. Remember, we were five weeks, five days for five weeks. So next week, we will find another interesting theme for you, maybe even closer to home to Mary Magdalene. We'll see. Have a good weekend. <laughs>